everybody. This is Nia Filer. I know you've missed me. I've been gone for a while, but sometimes I, you need to recall in, you know, I'm in a, like you could say I'm becoming, you know, I'm in an evolution stage in my life. And sometimes the womb is too intimate to let people in, you know, and you need to really recall into yourself, but I'm all good, you know, and as I've promised, I'm back and thank you for everyone who's messaged me and said that they've missed the videos. So here I am, as promised, talking to you about the energy above. First thing I have to say, maybe the most important thing, listen, we are at a time that isn't things as usual, you know, it's not a normal time. I mean, there's an illusion that everybody's back to normal and only we're dealing with stuff. But that ain't true. You know, as a therapist, I can tell you, I'm dealing with people calling me from all over the world, not only Israel, all over the world, all over Europe, the States, and are feeling the exact same thing. Like we're in the still before the storm. You know, we're standing still. We don't have any winds in our sails. There's a sense of fatigue. It's as if the hamster doesn't, isn't wheeling or isn't as eager anymore to step up to the wheel it was so content spinning before and people don't feel the same drive going to work you know it's like there's a little doubt that was set there and is you know causing an unrest suddenly there's an understanding that life doesn't have to be according to the former ideals that we've held and that indeed, you know, things have changed in our perception of society, of mankind. Suddenly we understand, you know, that maybe we are entering this Aquarian age of equality, of social cohesiveness in a sense. And until the my neighbor is secure and safe and happy, I would never be secure and safe and happy myself. And until the boy on the other side of town is safe and secure and happy, my boy would never be safe, secure and happy. And until the girl on the other side of the world is fed and safe and happy and healthy, there would always be a danger to my health and safety and happiness and this is very well demonstrated by the Indian variant of corona spreading through the world because not all the world is vaccinated even Israel you know that is very unique in that sense you know we have the Indian variant causing havoc here because as we let this disease develop and more variants come up you know the more dangerous it's going to become and of course, if we're not going to inoculate everybody, this isn't going to go away. So this is a very good example of this understanding that until you're healthy, I'm not safe myself, you know. Until you, you are not prosperous, I can never be really prosperous myself. And that comes to the final understanding that as long as this 10% of the population of Earth that is in charge of over 90% of the wealth in this world, and within that 10%, the upper 3% have over 70% of the wealth, until that changes, nothing changes. Nothing. And that's the big fight we're going to have through the next couple of years and hopefully you know the thing I'm working in on you know within my life is peace peace within myself peace with my neighbors peace within my world because historically this has been a time of war of great wars you know that eventually brought an upgrade to the relationship between the people and the rulers the economic uh, um, systems were upgraded, the educational systems were upgraded, the system of values you know, and understandings 
and the social systems were upgraded. Indeed, a time of an upgrade for civilization, but it was always the weakest who suffered, you know, and many times a big war was involved, and hopefully, you know, we're not going there. But through the next years, it, it, you know, we're going to have tidal waves of change coming up. And we have a part to play in it. We have a part to play in it. You know, it's, it's a bit about like these times that, you know, you have to choose sides. What side are you on? You know? And it's not about capitalism or communism or socialism, or any of these, you know, financial systems, as it is about the distribution of power. Because money is just another form of power. Anyway, so a lot of people are feeling disturbed. They're not willing to go back to that hamster wheel anymore, or at least not as eagerly as they once did. And there are a lot of people suffering from fatigue and depression because of it. If you are, you're not alone. In fact, you are in very good company, including myself. <laughs> and as I said, I'm dealing with patients like that, all clients, patients like that, all, all day, you know. And th this is only because you are acute. You're listening into the ether. And the questioning that you're going through is not arbitrary. It has great value. If something is sacred in this world, this is because this same questioning that is going through the minds of mankind right now are the ones that are going to bring the answering in the next few years that would bring the changes and ensue the changes that need to become. Indeed, we are all players on this great chessboard, this very important chessboard. So let's talk about the astrology. Hey, so back at you with uh, transits. Different day, different shirt, different makeup. Um, so we're heading into energetic storm. We're having the last super moon of 2021. It's a full moon in Capricorn, but there's a lot happening in the sky that counters that harsh, cold Capricornian kind of verdict atmosphere that is lying around and we t I talked about in the previous part of the video about the contradiction between the wanting to go back into a freer broader existence and the feeling of fatigue the feeling of um, the needing the need for transformation uh, in a position to recoiling back into the old traditions of, uh, of the, the world before COVID. And it definitely reflects in the sky. We've just had the longest day of the year, this, the summer solstice in the northern part of the globe. Um, the shortest day in the southern part of the globe. And just on Monday the 21st we've had Venus trining Neptune this is a very romantic inspirational time it's a time that we could enjoy within our relationships it's a time that we could become a bit more naive as well and it's definitely a time that we do not want conflicts we do not want to disturb any harmony around us we feel as if strife is not for us at this time. Tuesday the 22nd has a lot of good in the sky. By the end of the day, a bit too much good. So you just be careful not to take that extra teaspoon of sugar on Monday the 22nd and don't overdo things. Wednesday the 23rd and remember, we're heading into a super moon on the 24th. So up to the 24th, we're building up energy. We're building up energy. 23rd is full of energy by itself as the sun is trying Jupiter exactly on that day. That's this feeling of 
the needs to, to be freer and, 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 you know, step up into a broader existence in which we could all fulfill maybe a higher potential. Nevertheless, this could cause us to be extra optimistic and maybe negligent regarding our duty to actually step outside, out of our comfort zone and prove to the world our value and our talents. Venus would be opposing Pluto exactly on that day as well. It's a very transformational time within relationships, within our relationship with others, within our relationship with ourselves and our self-value and how we characterize it and what composes it. And indeed, our relationship with value and money in our lives. So all of these are subjects to change at this time definitely to a deeper understanding that involves understanding our faults as well and growing up and taking responsibility definitely this could be a time of change in status you know people could part people could meet and definitely you could be entering a job or leaving one if you're rocking the boat too harshly nevertheless this could be a very intimate time a time of bonding, both psychologically, emotionally, and sexually within relationships or within workplaces and joint ventures. And these uh, effects would stay with us for the next few days. Thursday the 24th is the super moon. We're having Saturn sextile in Chiron exactly on that day as well. Um, and we're having a square to Neptune. In a way, this is a harsh supermoon. It says, I don't care what you wished for. I don't care what you dreaded. This is how it is. This is what it is. This is the so-ness of things. They are so. And by acknowledging it and recognizing it, we are able to actually start tending this garden, actually start planting and inseminating it with new greeneries and sprouts to make up the forests of our future. Definitely a time that says what you've sown is what you reap. But the sudden sextile Chiron along with the other uh, uh, aspects we talked about from yesterday and the days before that really give it a different tone as well as a square to Neptune. Don't draw in to feeling a victim. Draw, don't draw in to feeling helpless. To sleep, to forgetfulness. Face the anxiety, but do it gently. <laughs> Remember to take care of yourself in the process. It's like going to the gym. You don't put something too hard on your shoulders. You take something small, you know, you can pick up and flex that muscle a bit and then you leave it for another day. And come back to it, you know, consistently. consistently. So this definitely is a super moon of stepping up, maturing, taking personal responsibility in our lives, understanding that the time to dream or daydream has long passed. Nevertheless, we are allowed as humans to do so. <coughs> Friday the 25th, interesting day in the sky, a lot of new energies coming in and allowing us flexibility in our lives. Saturday the 26th, very um, for, there, there could be a very fertile imagination on that day. It could be very good for artistic or spiritual practices or going out to nature. However, the moon is conjunct Pluto later that day. So do not let your emotional side become too dramatic and flare up. But rather know how to spell things out before they actually become volcanic. 
there's an opposition between the moon and venus that day as well so relationships could be a little tense and judgmental and just a little later on the 27th the moon opposes mars this is already a very combative time and then it uh, uh, sits on saturn you know so the 27th already is an intolerant aggressive day that we should all be careful with how we speak communicate and uh, and think and uh, and think and feel you know and communicate our feelings to others it's a day that we could all enhance our calm a little bit and and benefit from it monday the 28th the moon is conjunct jupiter it's considered a lucky day it's considered a day that epiphanies and new information can come in and we could have a broader understanding of the truth and Tuesday the 29th the moon is trining the Sun sextiling Uranus interesting beautiful energy is a great day to have fun great day to enjoy yourself great day to do new activities you've never done before so with that I leave you and of course I'm open to readings and courses um, I hope to hear from you soon as I still have the 30% COVID off this is Nia Fighter signing off may we all enhance the light within ourselves and within our lives and live long and prosper bye bye